People in the wine trade love the Loire Valley. Um, it's slightly marginal because it's quite far north in France. It doesn't always get the same sunshine, sunshine and warmth that the, that the rest of the country gets. Um, and yet, in spite of this, um, it's long time been considered the great basket of Paris so that the prisons who haven't really got a climate for making uh, much volume of wine uh, go to the closest place which is the Loire and every single wine style you can think of is made in the Loire. White, dessert, red, rosé, sparkling, late harvest, you name it. And um, you know, they're made in exceptionally high quality as well. So the vines work hard in the Loire and the Loire winemakers work the vines hard so it's it's a it's a it's, it's difficult but really rewarding um, and one of the overlooked okay before the overlooked bits what's it really famous for probably its most famous output is Sancerre and Fumé. right so if you if you leave those to one side and look at the reds uh, you're looking um, in Sancerre especially at, at uh, Pinot Noir uh, and then further towards the west uh, it comes it Pinot Noir stops being granted planted so much and you get amazing outcrops of Cabernet Franc. This is one of my favourite villages of all, in, anywhere. Um, Chinon is a, an amazing place. Um, there is uh, tricky outcrops of very ungiving soil and the Cabernet Franc digs very, very deep, just as it does in Bordeaux. Um, but in the Loire, which is probably its home, um, it produces these amazing, mineral-rich, um, almost iodine-like red wines, which are beautiful, complex, long, almost never heavy, um, really pure and absolutely delicious, amazing with food, high acid, sometimes higher tannins, depending on the plot of land, depending on the microclimate of each, uh, of each parcel. Um, this particular um, Cab this particular Cabernet Franc from Chinon um, has a lovely story to it. Olga Raffo um, inherited the estate uh, after the Second World War and was trying to um, make things work. It was, I think, her husband's estate. Uh, he died in 1949, which is an amazing vintage, and they didn't know what to do. There happened to be um, a refugee working with them in the in the vineyards who was a German winemaker by trade and so she took him in and made him head of the winery because he was the only person that knew what to do and she was doing a good thing as well so he then took over the uh, winery and or the winemaking in the winery and the wines became very very uh, very popular and also just very very good and um, it's now run by her granddaughter and her granddaughter's son I met a while ago and they're lovely lovely people but the wines are fantastic so as I say they're complex and um, this particular 2019 vintage which is quite a very warm vintage for the Loire and a very high quality long dry vintage as well and um, you get complexity but with mouthfeel and ri some supple richness as well and um, there's a little bit of tannic grip but leave it open for half an hour or so even decant a glass of it and you'll really reap the benefits um, it's absolutely delicious brilliant with game um, you used to sell a lot of this sort of stuff um, as being a perfect match for goose at Christmas if you didn't want to have to fork out for really expensive burgundy get an expensive version of this and you are you're gonna love it well I do and I really hope that you do as well <laughs>